Hi, I'm Stevie Mackey, and I'm a vocal coach. My sister and I would always sing in church. It was so common that I thought that everybody sang. I would sing in groups, I was singing background for Glee, and, and I started just being around musicians, because that's where I felt comfortable. And I wanted to be the very best at it. So I moved back here to LA from college and started my business, just kind of coaching from my house for free and then telling my friends to tell other people. And I got a job at a Christian TV station doing graphic design. It was cool, it was cool. It wasn't what I liked to do or loved to do, but I thought it'd be something to, that, could, that was consistent to make money. And, and so I went through a little period of, of a little downtime, a little depressing and trying to figure out my life and what I was meant to do and what I was supposed to do. And I knew, it was interesting when my boss told me I was laid off, he said, go do music, you're supposed to be singing. You're supposed to be doing music. I said, okay, and I didn't know if that was a blessing or, or what, you know, and I had to kind of find my way on my own. I started doing voice lessons, I remember doing it for free at first, just because I liked doing it, and I, I was always singing everywhere, and started my business, just kind of coaching from my house for free, and then telling my friends to tell other people and so I started teaching like a younger pop style of singing to make a living here. And I realized people wanted to sing proper and they wanted to sing with soul. There's been some, some moments where I feel like this is so what I'm supposed to do that I can't even explain it. I mean, one of them is doing voices for Family Guy. Most amazing thing to get a call for that. Jennifer Lopez called me in her dressing room and said, I want to work, I want to I want to take singing so seriously. I have a lot of things coming up. And that moment was very special for me. I've been I knew for sure at the moment I was in the right place and that I was ready. You know, a lot of my opportunities come from church, my church family and the people that I know through church. I remember when The Voice started and I remember loving the whole concept of it and I was working here at home vocal coaching and I said it'd be nice to get out the house and do something with The Voice. So a position opened up there in the band and before I knew it the position was filled. And so I was like, well, I'll move on, you know, so that was nice, but <laughs> nice thought. But just a little bit after that, the position was unfilled. And so I was like, well, I'm here. And I remember getting called for a session and I went in there knowing everybody's part. I was so ready and I just loved it so much. It felt like family. There was, there's relationships that are formed and it's like family. And who knew we'd be going into season 11 now. And so. It's been an amazing journey, and I've learned so much there. Most voice teachers have recitals, and I always found recitals to be, you know, a little bit um, uptight or boring to some people. So I, I started just having parties here, and uh, a lot of times I worked on weekends, so it was a day that I was home, and I felt like people could just come out because nothing else was going on. And it's a common thing in LA, Taco Tuesday, you know, especially here in LA. But I wanted to have one here at my home, and instead of recitals, I would throw Taco Tuesdays, where all my voice students would sing whatever we were working on, and we'd all back each other up and pass the mic around and just kind of unplanned and undesigned, just kind of just have a jam session and also make amazing tacos and eat. And people record it and they and they post it here or there, and it's been an amazing evolution to watch. I fund it myself and I want people to just feel like they can just come and have a good time no matter who it is and I don't really announce who's going to be here or whatever. Just anyone can come and everyone's the same and we all just sing and jam together. The love of music is more important than the business. The love of singing and the love of being around other musicians will always be more important than the business of it.
as a teacher, you don't teach knowledge all the time. You, you're really teaching someone how to think. To do that, I, I try to make everyone realize that they're a character and that the main goal is to communicate, to tell the story, to connect with people. The voice has to follow that. I can't just say, be great. What does that mean technically as a singer? What does it mean? It means if someone needs to hear this song, if someone needs to hear this story, how are you going to tell it to them? There's an internal line inside of you that connects to the song, and then there's a line that connects to the person who really needs it. And they're waiting for this story, they're waiting to hear it. So that's the, that's the goal of singing, that line of connection, right there. So it has to become a habit. Everything we work on has to become a habit. And that's where vocal lessons come into play, and that's why they're so important. You have this activity and this daily practice of you getting to know your instrument. For anyone starting out now, especially people who want to work in the business or coach, be vulnerable. Open up and let people see how this works. Let them see a mistake and then let them see you fix it. Use Facebook and Instagram and, and these mediums as much as possible to help promote who you are. Get somebody you believe in that's, that's already working hard, that you may see on YouTube, and that needs a little assistance in an area that you're familiar with. Say, hey, I could teach you how to breathe better and hold these notes out a little better. I could teach you, just hit them up and say, just let's, let's work together. Don't worry about the money, let's work together, just me and you. People help each other, we can't do this alone. We have to help each other. You know, something like that, that you can afford to do, even if you're working at CVS on the side, if you're working at Zara or wherever on the side, come home and do that in the evening and see one person. And then that person, I guarantee you, will tell their friend. And one of the friends they tell will be able to pay you more than Zara does working there all day. You see what I'm saying, it's all relationships. You work, they tell their friends, they tell their friends. Not necessarily the big names and all that. Focus on an artist that you really believe in and you have to make sure you're studied up and good on your end, but then I believe the doors will open. To be great, I have to make that a goal, and I have to know what great is. I try to give myself something very difficult to learn. For instance, right now I'm, I'm working in um, Hairspray, and I'm learning all these songs that I do not know because I grew up in California where Broadway's not as big. Anyway, I'm learning tons of songs and one day I had to learn 25 songs and, I'm, and I know it was hard for me. It's very hard to do and I'm sight reading and I knew that there were people better at sight reading in the room than me. And so I put myself in these positions purposely so that I can be great. I am uncomfortable sometimes so I can be great. I get frustrated with myself sometimes and I say, I should be better at this. And it makes me go home and study more so I can be great. You have to be around people that are much better than you. If you're the best singer in the room, you're in the wrong room, go find some other rooms. We're better singers, smarter people. Hang around the greats. Hang around people that are so much better at, at what they like to do that makes you look lazy. You know, and if you're not feeling that you should be better at something, you're probably in the wrong place. And so I purposely put myself in tough situations. The next time I have to learn this many songs, I'll say, got it. I'm greater because I did it last time. I like to sing with people, in front, behind. I like to sing back up. I like to sing in different voices. I like the art of singing more than anything else. And I don't mind being in front and I'm not scared of it, but I enjoy singing with my friends in the back and supporting artists and changing lives that way. I think I enjoy that more. I don't think I'd be happier as a famous artist. I mean, if, if God wants me to do any more than this, I'm willing to do it, and um, it may happen one day. Hi, I'm Stevie Mackey. I'm a vocal coach, 
What are you doing to be great? Leave some comments below.